We welcome you to the Lighthouse in Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania, with founders and pastors Ken and Wilda Brown. And now, let's go into the service already in progress. In, in the book of Acts, chapter t- uh, 2 and verse 22, everybody say 2, 22. Say it again, 2, 22. When the Lord wakes you up at 1.30 in the morning and you're walking around and say, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? I have the message already prepared. Well, tonight you'll get the uh, two men in a cave, all right? Uh, but I want to read the scripture down through, first of all. And uh, what a powerful time. Thank you, Brian, for allowing an opportunity for somebody to accept Jesus Christ uh, as Lord and Savior in this house. That's the most important thing for the resurrection. Uh, but it says here, you men of Israel, and actually we can say you men and uh, women are sitting here. You men hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, uh, a man approved of God among you by miracles uh, and wonders and signs, uh, which God did by him in the midst of you, uh, as you yourselves also know. How many of you know uh, that in the last days, uh, Jesus Christ is going to be glorified again when you name his name, uh, and there's going to be signs and wonders and miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, and that's in the book of Hebrews. uh, And it says, as we glorify Jesus, uh, we might as well, Joshua, we might as well get ready uh, for great signs and wonders and miracles to take place uh, because it happened when Jesus was on the earth in the flesh, uh, and now that is coming back again. And I wanted you to catch one word in verse 22 there. Uh, It said, hear these words, Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus. Uh, Half of you did. That's good. Jesus, a man of Nazareth, a man approved of God, approved of God. That is so important. Uh, And uh, because he was approved of God, uh, God is approving men and women again. And there's going to be miracles and wonders and signs uh, and uh, also, according to Hebrews, uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he was delivered by determinate, verse 23, he being delivered by determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain him. But listen to verse 24. Are you ready? Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, uh, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Uh, David speaks concerning him, said, I foresaw the Lord at my, before my face. He was on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh rested in his hope, because you will not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. You have made known the joy with thy countenance. So therefore, men and brethren, I freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn an oath to him, that the fruit of his loins, which is Jesus Christ, according to the flesh, that he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, wherefore we are witnesses. Uh, And I think right now as I read that part of the scripture, I think we need to just stand uh, and uh, thank the Father for raising up Christ from the dead. Give him glory right now. Uh, Raise your hand. Clap your hands. uh, Just give him praise and honor in the house. Uh, It's a time of celebration. It's a time uh, when uh, the cross of Calvary was so important. And we're going to be talking about uh, 15 or 20 minutes here. Uh, You may be seated. uh, And uh, The message this morning has been changed, but it's not changed. God loved us enough. God sent his only begotten son that we who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In the book of Galatians, it says, In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son and redeemed us from the curse of the law. Somebody say, I am redeemed this morning. That's why Janet had to sing that this morning. I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am redeemed. I have accepted Jesus Christ. 
you haven't accepted Jesus, uh, this is your opportunity during this service. Uh, just uh, very simply as a child, because uh, unless you have faith as a child, you'll never enter in to the kingdom of God. And so if you don't know Jesus where you are sitting, uh, just say, Jesus, uh, I hear your word today, uh, and I hear about the resurrection, uh, and I hear about the glory, uh, and I hear about uh, heaven, uh, and I know there is a hell to shun. So today I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. Make it a personal relationship. It's not coming to church that's going to get you uh, saved. Uh, it is having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you're in this church, whether you're in a car, uh, whether you're in you're some other place, uh, God has opened the opportunity and given us, uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall, shall be saved. Uh, and so salvation doesn't come because you the church. Uh, salvation comes uh, because uh, you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so we are celebrating today uh, uh, the greatest season. I know uh, Christmas is important, uh, and, and God sent his son in the fullness of time, uh, born of a woman, to redeem us from the curse of the law. Uh, and I know God loved us enough that he sent his only begotten son, uh, but this time, uh, this is a celebration time. Uh, and uh, even in the church right now, the church is now celebrating. You have a word for us this morning. I'll hand the mic here in a few moments. Uh, uh, there, there is a celebration that is coming back to the church. Holiness uh, is coming back to the church. Uh, I heard a young man uh, the other day, uh, just uh, uh, probably in his, uh, I'd say, 35 or 40 maybe, uh, and uh, he, he is creating a great uh, moving and stirring. And he said, church, it's time to take off your masks. It's time to open your mouth. And it's time to begin to praise the Lord. And him glory. You have been duped. You have been gagged by the political things of this world. But God is still in charge. His name is Wonderful and Counselor. He is a Prince of Peace. He is a mighty God, everlasting Father. And the government is upon his shoulders and not upon our shoulders and not upon the shoulders of a Joe Biden uh, or even a Mr. Trump, uh, President Trump. I'll call him president. He's still president. Uh, anyway, in my heart. Uh, and so uh, I don't know where you are, but it's about time to church. Uh, I, I, I look down the street, uh, and uh, the, uh, it's been quite a while. I was up at Dairy Queen, uh, and somebody come out, uh, and uh, they took their mask down, uh, had smoke, and then they put their mask back up. I thought, I'm not the most intelligent person in the world, but all that smoke uh, in my lungs is not going to help my life. And, uh, and, and people, I see them walking out, uh, uh, walking down the street, right down Indiana, down the street, uh, and the sun is shining, uh, and the wind is blowing, and they got their masks on. And I don't know what they're trying to think. Uh, there is an air that God is breathing in this day, in this hour. Uh, and it's a positive thing. Uh, God is getting us ready for some great and mighty things. Uh, we're celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we can't celebrate that resurrection without looking back uh, to the whipping post uh, and to where Jesus in Isaiah 15 where he was ashamed, he was shamed, and he was put down, and it says his visage was so marred that you would not even want to look upon him in the natural. He bore all of that shame and that reproach so that you don't have to bear the shame and the reproach any longer. It says in the book, Isaiah 53, uh, that uh, by his stripes we are healed. Uh, surely he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace. That's why people don't have any peace. They don't recognize uh, that Jesus said, I come to give you peace, uh, not the peace of this world, uh, but it is my peace uh, that I give unto you. In John 16, 33, in the center part of that part, the Amplified Bible, it says uh, that Jesus said, uh, uh, in this world you're going to have tribulation. Anybody there? Anybody recognize the tribulation and the trials and the problems? Uh, in the world you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have trials. You're going to have agitators, agitations. Uh, and I add a little bit to my own there, agitator, because somebody's always agitating. But there you're going to have that. But Jesus said this, be What? Be of good cheer. He said, be of good cheer. Look at your neighbor and say, quit your griping. <laughs> be of good cheer. Why? Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. 
and deprived it, amplified now, deprived it of its power to harm you. Somebody say, no harm. No. Say it again, no harm. No. I used to sing this song, and I'm not going to sing it here this morning. It went like this. No harm, no harm, no harm. No harm, no harm, no harm. No harm, no harm, no harm, no harm. The devil can't do me no harm. Why? I'm safely under the blood. I'm safely under. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Christ. And at the whipping post, Jesus took those stripes. And they tell me that there are 39. I don't know that for sure, do you? But all the theologians say there were 39 stripes for every major disease and pestilence that would come against you. And so by the blood of Jesus Christ, if you have a need in your body this morning, you can claim that by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Not, not, and believers can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Uh, take the anointing oil. Uh, any man is afflicted, uh, let him pray. Did you hear what I said in James? If, is anyone afflicted, let him pray. Everybody say, I need to pray. And is anyone merry among you, you need to do like Jack was doing this morning. I mean, I told his daughter, Jill, I said, he, your dad's wound up this morning. Well, he's celebrating. He's 70 years old and he doesn't even look like it. Seven more years, he'll catch me. So uh, uh, he's celebrating today. Are you celebrating today? Not just the birthday, but you're celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was at the whipping post, and he bore those stripes for you and I. They mocked him. He had to carry his own cross. He went to a place called Golgotha, or the place of the skull, and they put him on that cross along with two other thieves. He was known among the transgressors. That's what the Word of God prophesied over him, but he was sinless. The reason he was there, he was burying Dale's sin. He was burying Nancy's, and the right hand's going to come too, Nancy. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Healing is in the house in the name of Jesus. He bore stripes, and when he went to the cross, he carried those stripes to cross. And as he was on the cross, Jack sings that song, and I love it, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I was on his mind. I don't know about you this morning, but I am so thankful because I was in school as a kid. I was a, I, I, I was a person, never mind what I was. It's too long of a thing. But I am changed by the blood of Jesus, and I have come into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so as he was on that cross, I was on his mind. I want you to know something. When Jack sings that, Jack, do you have it here this morning? All right. You know you're going to sing it. All right. Uh, uh, we do things around here just as we do them, okay? Uh, by the way, I got a new suit on this morning. It's nine months old, but it, it wouldn't fit before. So we went to Nancy, and Nancy did some things. I lost 10 pounds, but I gained here. That's called winter adipose. That'll go off in a little bit. All right. So anyway, back to what we were saying. Jesus is on the cross, and there we are. We are there with Jesus, and he's looking down, and he saw Dale when you came and gave your heart to the Lord and gave your testimony. He saw uh, Jeff when you came up and said, what's happening to me? <laughs> you're giving your heart to Jesus. You were crying. You were laughing. You were crying and laughing, and somebody says, what's happening? Jesus is moving by his spirit, and he's moving in here today for each of you. You say, oh, I don't know about this Jesus. I, 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 I hear about it every Easter. I, I come at Christmas time and I get it there. we call you people CEOs okay here Christmas Easter and other occasions <laughs> Paul used to be a CEO I'll talk about him say he can't hear me so I'll talk about him uh, Paul was a CEO and what I said to him one day he came up on our porch and uh, uh, he, he would come Christmas he would come Easter if there was a wedding or if there was a funeral he would come uh, and what I said to him you're a CEO he said uh, What's a CEO? Does that mean I'm a head of a company? No, you only come on certain occasions. Well, you're here on this occasion. How many are here on this occasion? And this is a great occasion because today we are celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was on that cross, but they took him from that cross, 
And they put him in, and I was going to use him as a cave, but they put him in a cave, but they put him in a borrowed tomb. He only needed it for three days. That's, she told me, she said, uh, he, he borrowed that tomb. He only needed it three days. When he went to that tomb, they put him in the tomb, and they put guards around that place, and they put the stone against it so he could not come out. And they guarded that place. But what they didn't know, that on the inside of that tomb, there was a whole lot going on. Because the Bible says, what, when he ascended, he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. And when he descended, he also ascended and gave gifts unto the church, some apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists. And you say, well, what does that mean? It's in that scripture that I read. It said, he will not leave his soul in hell. It was talking about Jesus Christ. So when they put him in that tomb, a lot of people thought they just put him in there. He laid there for three days, and then he came out. And that's what you have heard. But I am telling you by scriptures, twice in here, and also in the book of Ephesians, that when Jesus was laid in that tomb, his soul body raised up from there, and he went into hell itself. Remember when he was on the cross, and the one thief mocked him and laughed at him, but the other one repented and said, Lord, remember me? And Jesus said, today, everybody say today, you shall be with me in paradise. Paradise was on one side, hell itself. Those who do not know Christ as their saviors on the other side, there was a great gulf affixed between the two. Satan owns the one, but something happened when they put Jesus into that tomb. Are you hearing me this morning? You may not have ever heard this, but I'm teaching you from the Word of God. When he is saved, what? Uh, that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. Uh, the scripture says here uh, that he went right into hell itself. Uh, when he went into hell, when into paradise, uh, crossed the gulf uh, that no man could cross uh, because of the blood. Uh, and he went right into Satan's paradise. He went right into Satan's area. And he took the keys of death and hell. Ro uh, Hebrew, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 1 said uh, he holds the keys uh, to death uh, and to hell. Where did he get them? He went to hell, you and I, so we don't have to go to hell. We have a place reserved. Uh, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, you believe in God. Uh, believe also in me. In my Father's house uh, are many mansions. Uh, and I go to pre place, re pre prepare a place for you that where I am. Oh, you can see I'm stirred. I, I can't even get the words out quick enough. Man, what a powerful celebration we're having here today. You're getting a hold of the word. Somebody say, Jesus went to hell. Say it. Jesus went to hell. And he caught he went right in, and he caused Satan a, a havoc day. He took from him the keys of death and a hell, and now he holds them in his hand, waiting for you to receive that abundant life. He came to give his life. I heard it in the prophecy, and that life more abundantly this morning. Hallelujah. You don't have to go to hell. You, there is a hell to shun, but also a heaven to gain, and you don't have to go to hell this morning. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ. No, you don't have to sign a card in this church uh, to belong to this church. Uh, you can't even find one. We don't have any. We don't have any cards in this church. The reason why we don't have any cards, we want you to enter into the kingdom of God. Boy, it's good to see Helen and Bud here this morning. I know you've been sickly, but God, God's going to strengthen you here today. Hallelujah. Good to see you here too. You got her that internet thing, and she's 80. You're going to be 90 years of age, and she uses the internet. I don't even use the internet. She calls me on messenger all the time. Or, uh, yeah, good to have you here this morning. You're celebrating this morning, and you're going to be 90 years of age and still loving Jesus. Do you still love Jesus? How, how much do you love Jesus? When I went over the mountain, I was at death's door, and I laid in two rest homes for months and months, and I made Wally get me out of one because they treat the elderly terrible. Terrible, terrible. You're not elderly, are you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I am. Yes, I am, but I'm not. 
Hallelujah. And so you're celebrating with us today. You came here and you drove the whole way up from Pittsburgh to bring mom up here today to celebrate the birth, the death, and the resurrection. One day, heaven was filled with his praises. One day when sin was as black as me, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwell amongst men, my example is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Hallelujah. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming. Oh, glory. And now, living, he loved me, dying, he saved me, buried, he carried my sins far away, rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glory, us day. Joshua, did you ever hear that song? You did. That's an old, 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 old song. But I heard recently, uh, Casting Crowns brought it back, and I heard it. It's the longest song. It has five verses, Janice. Not too long ago, one day, one day, heaven was filled with his praises. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Praises are coming back to the house of God. When praise ascends in the house of God, miracles and signs and wonders are going to happen. Uh, salvations, uh, lives are going to be changed. Uh, we're going to be different than we were before. I don't want to leave Jesus in hell because it said, you will not leave my soul in hell. So Jesus was there for a period of Three days as Noah was in the belly of the well for three days. For Jesus prophesied and said, as Noah was in the belly of the well, so shall the son of man be in the earth for three days. But he went into hell and he rescued and ransomed you. And he rescued and ransomed me. And he rescued and ransomed every one of you. Somebody in this house ought to give a shout unto God this morning. Somebody ought to be began to celebrate and say, thank you, Father, for what you did, that you loved me enough, that you sent the very best out of heaven to redeem me, to rescue me, and to let me know that you love me. Jesus, on the third day, somebody say the third day, the third day, somebody came to me not too long ago, and they said, well, we, we don't have uh, Sunday services, uh, we still believe in the Sabbath. Well, they're back under the old covenant. Uh, I'm under a new covenant because Jesus was resurrected on the first day. Jesus was resurrected on what we call Sunday. You got that? So we, we don't celebrate uh, uh, the Sabbath any longer, even though we recognize it was uh, important for them at that point. Uh, but we recognize <laughs> that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Well, on the third day, somebody say the third day. Say it again, the third day. He arose. He came forth out of the grave. Oh, all those people, the tomb was there, the stone was there, the guards were there, and yet Jesus comes forth. And he comes forth for a reason, but that was not the end of it. As he came out and he was on the earth, uh, and you know that for 40 days, uh, and he taught his disciples concerning the things of heaven uh, and what he's going to do. Uh, but there came a day when he went out to the Mount of Olives, uh, and as he was teaching them, uh, he began to ascend before them. Uh, there is uh, a resurrection power 
that we have available to us, and that is through Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Jesus, we are celebrating your resurrection, and today we are receiving the resurrection power that you gave to us. Because the Apostle Paul would say it this way, Oh, to know him and the power amplified outflowing from the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that power is flowing out. Uh, and uh, I, I got a scripture for you this morning because I'm not going to, we're celebrating Jesus and we're celebrating. And uh, by the way, somebody on the Facebook put uh, Easter is not in the Bible. Yes, Easter is in there. It's in, the, um, uh, where was it? In Acts chapter 12 and verse 4. Okay, 4 and 12. Wow, it's in there. Okay. I went and looked it up to make sure, but it is in there. And, uh, we celebrate Easter, so if you say Happy Easter, you're okay. Because after Easter, <laughs> Jesus is no longer in the grave. I like to call it Resurrection Sunday. A celebration of the resurrection of the risen Lord. Thank God he lives. He lives. He lives within my heart. Uh, and, uh, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and did him die. No, that, I, that wasn't, I knew that wasn't. Okay, but it's in there. Okay, I looked it up. So uh, anyway, say, somebody say resurrection power. I want you to, Dana, if you can put up this scripture for me, in, in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. I want you to see something here. Romans 8 and 11. We're celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, uh, and, and we want to lift him up. All the glory goes to him this morning. Okay. I want you to read this scripture. I looked it up last night in Strong's Concordance because I, I remembered it, and we sing a, a chorus like this. It says, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. Are you all reading that with me? King James Bible, yes. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, if he dwell, if he dwell, if he dwells in you. If you have accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, if he dwells, Kyle, within you, if he dwells within you, then he that raised up Christ from the dead shall what? Shall what? What does that word quicken mean? It's an old English term. Make alive again. Hallelujah. So Jesus is alive again. So when the Spirit of Christ, that when the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, three days he came out from that tomb and there was glory. And then uh, uh, the Scripture says in Romans 8, 11, he's talking to us, Paul the Apostle, saying, if that Spirit dwells in you, if you have accepted the Spirit of Christ and you have exper experienced that adoption into the family of God and he dwells within you, if he dwells within you, Reverend McCulley, does the Spirit of Christ dwell in you? Then the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, he shall quicken, make alive, and it actually means make it energetic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He raised up Christ from the dead, shall quicken your mortal bodies. Hallelujah. Stand up and give a hand to clap onto the Lord right now and say, thank you, Lord, for quickening my body right now. Thank you, Lord, for this is the flesh. Thank you, Lord, for what you did. Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if he dwells, and I know he dwells in me, hallelujah, he dwells in me. He said, if he dwells in you and you abide in him, you can ask anything that you want and he will grant it unto you. Hallelujah. That was Jesus talking. Uh, you may be seated. Uh, if the Spirit dwells in you. I don't want anybody going to sleep. That's why I'm here to stand. I'm not trying to do a Catholic thing. That's okay. I'm just trying to keep you awake. I know it's hot in here. The other night we were freezing and couldn't figure out why, but we got that one fixed, boy. I turned up the old heat in this house. It's working. Are, are you, glory, to God, glory to God, it's working. Are you about ready? Amen. Go ahead. Amen. God put this on my heart, and I wanted to share it with you all. On the cross of that day, on the cross of that day, it was spoken, it is finished. 
and how true that word was because it finished that day. But I tell you, when he came up out of that grave, he spoke, it has been established now, a new covenant for my people. Established. God established it, not me, not pastor, no one. God established a new covenant for you to live in, for you to be victorious in, for you to have a bountiful life, for you to be above and not below, for you to be everything that God wanted you to be. He established it just for you. If you walk out this day, you will walk out with the same body, the same person, the same thinking that you came in with. But if you'll stand and say, I believe Jesus died for me. If you say he was a rose for me. If you say, I want to accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. When you leave here today, you'll be a new creation. Amen. Old things have passed away in here. They're all laying on the floor. Dead bones. Hallelujah. Dead bones, but he's given new life into your body if you'll accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you have been a believer for a while, God says, when I establish this new covenant, I establish something new for the believer. He wants you to step up. He wants you to come forward. He wants you to be everything he wants you to be. But you have to be willing. Amen. Do we have any willing believers here? Do we have anybody that needs help? Do we have anybody that wants to step up in the things of God? Because he established it for this day, for this morning, for this time, for you to stand above all things. He established a life that shall generate in you his plan, his purpose, everything he wants you to be, if you'll just stand. If you'll stand and say, I receive. If Thank you'll you just Jesus. stand Thank you, Jesus. and say, Hallelujah. I desire Hallelujah. what God has given me. I've Hallelujah. established it for you. Established. Everyone here. It's established. God speaking to your heart. He is placing in your heart the things of his word, of his word is in you. Established. Hallelujah. Say, I'm being established. Say it out loud. I believe Jesus saves and his blood washes whiter than snow. Well, I believe Jesus saves and his blood washes whiter than snow. Sing it with me. I believe Jesus saves and his blood Washes white than snow. Say it. I believe Jesus saves and his blood washes white than snow. Joshua. We just do things around here. Did you have something you needed to say to this congregation this morning? Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is just uh, uh, placing it on, on, on my heart here this morning. I know I, I just want to speak to those who are, are coming to find something that is much greater than church. It's something that is much greater than just the building that we're sitting in. Because it is not just the building. We are just the body of Christ, but it is his presence that makes us whole. It is his presence that we are seeking after. And, and I just sense in the spirit that there are many here. 
that are seeking something far greater than what they have seen so far in a building or a church that they have been in. I'm talking to those who have come into this place who are broken hearted. I'm talking to those who are, are on their last limb that they're ready to go blow their brains out if they don't find hope in Christ. They're, 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 they're saying, Lord, I, I know you're real, but could you reveal yourself to me today. Somebody has said that prayer. Somebody has spoken that into the atmosphere and God says, I hear it. I hear it loud and clear. I want, I, I just, let's do something here this morning. I don't know if it ever happens here, but the presence of God wants to move in this place here this morning. If that might be you, I want you to just step forward in faith. Uh, the the uh, Spirit reminded me of the story of the woman who had an issue of blood. And she didn't care that everybody else knew what was going on inside of her. See, anything that she would touch religiously meant that that would also be unclean, right? She didn't care. She pushed through the crowd. She knew if she, if she could just get to the hem of the garment of Jesus, that she would be healed. It was her faith that led her to come to the place that Jesus was. And Jesus was surrounded by a crowd of people. And, but it didn't matter. You know, Jesus was so in tune with the Holy Spirit that he could feel the power released from him. She didn't even touch his actual body. She touched the hem of his garment. The Spirit's saying here this morning, I want to do the same. So if that's you, everybody stand, please. In Isaiah chapter 6, it says... Isaiah got a revelation that he saw the Lord sitting on his throne yes. and his robe filled the temple. Oh, yeah. And I, can I tell you that the Holy Spirit is already here, but the thing is that his robe is a continuous thing. It is always coming in. So when we say, come Holy Spirit, he continues to come. His glory comes through with his robe. And Father God, I just ask that you would come into this place and that you would yes, shift Lord. this yes, atmosphere yes, right Lord. now in the Hallelujah. name of Jesus. Come Holy, Spirit. Come, Holy Come, Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Not just change the Hallelujah. atmosphere Hallelujah. of this building, Ooh. but Papa, would you change the atmosphere of our hearts? Yes. Would you allow your presence Hallelujah. to come into yes. us, Father? Father, we may have come into this building, but we came searching for you. We we may search the scriptures for the answers, but the answers point to you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that your presence would come down upon us right now and that it would fill our hearts and our minds, that those who are searching you, for you, that you would step forward here to this altar right now Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. You, Jesus. Those who are seeking... I ask that you would come forward and just Hallelujah. allow us to pray over you Thank and just you, to Jesus. receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you, that you would Thank be you, have the indwelling Hallelujah. of the Holy Hallelujah. Spirit indwelling. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come in to my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to say. Come into my heart. Jesus. Pray that little prayer with me, please. Say it. Uh, Come into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Come.
Getting ready, Hezekiah was getting ready to reinstate the altar and and the uh, the prayer and the the covenant. Uh, some of the people were not yet prepared, and so he said, "Lord, is it okay if I pray for them today because they don't know exactly what to do?" So I've asked Joshua to be a Hezekiah just for a few moments and just pray a prayer for those that might. Uh, be feeling the touch and the urgency and saying, what is happening to me? Go ahead. Father God, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you that you are here among us. We thank you that you see the very ones that you are speaking to, the mm, very situations yes, that are going on inside them, inside their world, Father God, inside their atmospheres, the things that they've brought inside with them. Father, I thank you that you, you see them and where they are at and the needs that they have. And I thank you, Father, that the same power that you gave to Jesus, you have placed inside of us here today. And Lord, I thank you that it just not just brings to life Jesus, but it also breaks chains. It yes. breaks strongholds. Yes. I break Hallelujah. and sever the ties chains of drug addiction in this place. Burdens are I broken. break and sever the ties Hallelujah. of any depression, any anxiety right now in the name, in the name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Every knee shall bow. Hallelujah. There are no rivals to you, Lord. Glory, Lord, every glory, knee glory. shall bow. Every single thing that is causing a distraction in this place, Thank you, I rebuke Jesus. it and I bind it up right now Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. I in loose your Holy Jesus. Spirit into this place, Father Ooh, God, Lord, in the Lord, name Lord, of Lord, Jesus. Lord, Lord, touch them. Touch. Lord, I release and loose a freedom and a joy into every single mind and heart and every man, woman, and child right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would just allow each person to just have an encounter with you like no other time, Lord, Hallelujah. that it would just be about yes, you Lord. and that your presence you, would Jesus. just draw us into draw a deeper relationship Lord. with you, that all the things that are trying to take our attention, that we would focus in on you and the very thing that you did for us and that we would focus in on a relationship with you and it would be the greatest thing, it would be the most important thing in our lives each and every day set in course from this day forward. Hallelujah. Lord, I, I just I, I pray your Holy Spirit Come will Holy give Spirit. wisdom and Come knowledge Spirit, and discernment yeah. in every area of everybody's life that has something going on. But most of all that they would be sensitive in the Spirit to know your presence. They would be sensitive in the Spirit to know how much that you love them. Hallelujah. Father Hallelujah. God is saying I love you. I love you with an love unending you. love. Uh, love. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I look at my sons, they don't have to actually do anything. And I love them. <laughs> they can spit in my face. They can smack me. I might get a little irritated. <laughs> yeah. I might get mad. But can I tell you, I still love them. There's absolutely nothing that changes that. And Father God is saying that here today. There's absolutely nothing that you can do that ever will separate my love from you. So whatever it is that is trying to shut you off from believing that, it is a lie from the pit of hell. Yes, I, he loves you. Amen. He loves you. Hallelujah. He has a hope and a future. Hallelujah. He has come to give you life and life more abundantly. Stand on his truth. Stand on his promises. Stand firm in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Seated, uh, Jack, are you ready? Uh, while he's getting ready to sing this song, I want you to hear the words of this song. He sung it the other night at communion, and it's so powerful. 
When he was on the cross, he was looking forward to this day, to you today. And uh, if you wonder who this Joshua is and uh, why he's preaching here this morning, that's why God changed my message and got me up at 1.30 in the morning. I have no idea what's going on, but I knew he's in charge. And I'm always willing to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit because lives are being changed in this house today. Jack. Mistakes and often trip just common flesh and bone. But I'll prove someday just what I say. I am of a special kind. When he was on the cross. I was on his mind. A look of love was on his face, the thorns on his head. The blood was on that scarlet road, stained of crimson red. So his eyes were on the crowd that day. He looked ahead in time when he was on the cross. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Yet when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even as I had said by my word that my son was approved. I have approved you today, for you are special unto me, and I have called you out, and I have given you opportunity, and even in your heart you can feel the tugging of my Holy Spirit, for my Spirit has been sent. 
bring you into the kingdom, uh, to bring you in uh, to that uh, and uh, leave the things of the sins uh, and the faults and the failures in the past. Uh, for your past is gone. It was proved at the cross of Calvary, uh, and I paid that penalty for you. And as I paid that penalty, I, Jesus, would testify unto you uh, that it is in love and mercy uh, and loving kindness uh, that I have spoken to you today. Uh, it is uh, a time that you are giving uh, a great celebration for what I did for you, but I am also celebrating you, and I am lifting you up today, and I am putting honor upon you today, even as you hear my word, and you hear the various servants, and as you hear the message of my Holy Spirit, I would say unto you that I have drawn you with cords that cannot be broken, and I have drawn you out that I might draw you in to the great and the mighty expectations that I have ordained for your life. So therefore, look unto my Son, look unto me, look unto the Father, and look unto the Spirit, for we are moving and hovering over you today to bring you into great and mighty things. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to watch a new service every Sunday evening at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Watching on Facebook, please click the like button and leave a positive comment. And please share with others. YouTube watchers, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Help spread the good news of Jesus Christ.